Today, we're making a coffee blossom boche, and it's freaking tasty. Let's get started. So today we're using coffee blossom honey to make a coffee blossom boche. A boche is a mead with honey that's been caramelized or just heated up in some form or fashion for a amount of time. Boches are really fun to make, and I thought using coffee blossom honey would do really well with this specific recipe. Coffee blossom honey doesn't quite taste like real coffee, but it does have a subtle spice and roasty note to it. We started by bocheting half of our coffee blossom honey at 155 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes. This didn't quite get it up to a boil, which is exactly what we wanted. While we were waiting for our honey to finish bocheting, we mixed together the other half of our non bocheted coffee blossom honey with some water. After the honey was mixed, we added our bocheted honey as well. We added the Lauven D V10 because it's a clean and fast fermenter that will do well with this brew. This brew had a starting gravity of 1.082. If this ferments to 1.000, which we know it will based on the alcohol tolerance of the D V10 strain, this will be about a 10.5% ABV brew. I chose to do a semi-staggered nutrient schedule with this because I knew that it being a higher ABV brew, it would need that help. I added my Fermate O at the 24 hour and 72 hour mark. We had split it into two different batches, so we added them then. This nutrient will ensure that our yeast are happy and healthy as they ferment. The brew took about three weeks to finish fermenting, and then it somewhat cleared up. It finished at 1.000 gravity after that fermentation had ended, so we were looking at a 10.5% ABV brew. It's now time for us to rack it into a new container with an auto siphon and tubing. This helps to minimize the amount of oxygen that gets into the brew at this point. So we're gonna wanna back sweeten this brew. So I'm choosing to stabilize it with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. The conjunction of these two things halt future fermentation, allowing for us to back sweeten with a fermentable sugar. You can alternatively pasteurize or choose a different method. Before I back sweetened, I also wanted to oak this brew. I was sitting on some mocha oak chips, and I felt like it'd be really fun to pair this mocha oak with the coffee blossom honey. So we added one ounce of mocha oak chips to this five gallon brew for three weeks. This imparted some great flavors and set us up for success as we back sweetened with more coffee blossom honey. We added enough coffee blossom honey to get to about 1.030 final gravity. We didn't do much with acid balance as far as adding citric or malic or tartaric acid because I didn't feel like this brew needed it. My last step, which was not videoed, was adding sparkaloid to help this force clear. After adding the clearing agent and letting it set for another two weeks, we went ahead and bottled some. I shared some with my friend Bill Boyer so he could help me with the tasting, so let's hop to that tasting. Welcome, Bill Boyer, to the Man Made Mead channel for a tasting. We got to chat on a podcast, and now I get to throw some mead at you. Are you ready to try some, some different stuff? Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. I have yet to open any of the other bottles you sent me, so it's good to actually get into some of yours yet. So I've been saving those for this and then also for the club I mentioned earlier. So I'm excited about this. Uh, okay, well, so this is literally your first time trying any of my meads, so that'll be uh, that'll be kind of fun. Um, so we're drinking the Coffee Blossom Boche, and people just kind of saw the rundown of it. Uh, mocha Oak and Coffee Blossom Honey that was half boche and, and not halved for the other. I didn't back sweeten with shade coffee blossom so that would have probably helped but regardless a interesting brew and i really like coffee blossom honey have you ever used it in a brew yeah i, I have I've, I've never uh, done it in a boche but I've, I've done a coffee actually did a coffee mead with a coffee before and i've done it in a couple i have a polish one that i did it with too that was pretty good oh that sounds good it's so interesting and the one that i got was from the amma deal from like i don't know september and you can tell it's quality because it doesn't have like bee parts in it, but it, like there's definitely raw <laughs> honey in there. It's not filtered or anything, so it's quality. Yeah, I, I got the coffee that I used was from Hawaii, and I did get some AMA one from uh, Brazil recently. I haven't tried it yet, though. It's uh, it's super fun. I actually bought more because I, I loved it enough. So tell me what you get on this Coffee Blossom Boche with Mocha Oak. Really leaning into the roasty toasty side. I'm really not getting a lot of the uh, caramelized notes off of it. it it's it's a yeah. tasty. I mean, I get a lot of the honey in there, but you know, and also uh, that's like, oops, there, there's my <laughs> screen going out there. 
But, you know, in regards to the color of it, normally when I've seen a lot of Boche, of course, you said it was about 50% of it. Yeah. This is very light. Yeah, it, it definitely, I'm, I'm looking color-wise and taste-wise, you're right. I definitely think I probably should have up to like 75% Boche or even 100% Boche and then maybe came back. Uh, also, though, I could have back sweetened with Boche coffee blossom and, you know, and, and continued to get that character. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of times when you, you, you do Boche, there's a little bit more of a bitterness to it. So I don't get very much of the um, bitterness that, that some people, it depends, you know, again, how dark you make the honey and everything. Yeah. But sometimes, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> if, if you don't back sweeten, it can sometimes taste almost burnt, depending on how dark you got it. So. Right. I've definitely had some Boches that are like, I mean, the honey started started this color and ended up, you know, pitch black. Well, the crock puck method, which is what I normally use, does take a little bit longer. I mean, I'll let it go for six hours, but I put it like on low. And yep. you get to watch it and you can, you know, put it on a piece of paper, test it out. And sadly, the, one of my favorite things about this, you know, making this style is getting a spoon and taking the top of that foam mm. and then burning your mouth. I don't enjoy the burning <laughs> yeah. part of the mouth part, but I do enjoy that fresh, almost marshmallow taste when it's like that. Unfortunately, that's why I do like back sweetening with that kind of honey too, because uh -huh. it does give that flavor too a little bit better for yeah. that, you know, with this. Isn't that marshmallow delicious flavor? I would call so, it. so would you say? I I don't know. I'm tempted to almost as I submit this to competitions and 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 things to not necessarily declare it maybe as a boche only because I didn't boche it quite enough. Should I be calling this a trad? <laughs> and you know, just uh, to me, it would be a trad. If you said it, was, I, I would. I'd be like, I, I don't get it. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's a decent trad. I mean, it, it has a, uh, you know, it, it it's on that. Oh, well, I would call it around almost a semi, like a sweet mm -hmm. semi sweet. You know, I wish there was more than just three tiers of stuff. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it's on that borderline of being sweet and between semi sweet there. But um, I mean, it, it's definitely very drinkable. What do you think about, you know, we talked a little bit. I explained to you what I did before. Uh, and I, did, I talked about not doing an acid balance or anything with acid. With this being the sweetness level is and that honey character, blah, blah, blah. What do you think about the, the acid balance? I think I would end up actually carbonating. It would give a little bit more acid, mm. but also give something to the body. Because to me, the body on this, it's lacking something. I can't put my finger exactly on it. Yeah. Um, but it almost is watery. And I think the carbonation may... Uh, lift it up a little bit. Yeah. Lift it up, actually. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I haven't done a lot of carbonating of things past 7 or 8%. Generally, I'm like, eh, I'll, you know, if it's like 7 or 8, I'll do it. But... It is interesting to now feature that, to use that as a tool. I've used it for session meads as a tool. Obviously, if you have a 6% session mead that's not carbonated, that is, it's not going to be good. I mean, there's just, there's just no way. So, I mean, there's probably a way I say that. But something like this definitely would benefit from some of that. Well, interesting. I... I, you are totally right. I, I think I should have leaned heavier into the coffee blossom side. You know, what's interesting about this is, and I mentioned before, I still have three, four gallons of this thing sitting around. The problem here is if I go and back sweeten with more Boshade coffee blossom honey, this thing's going to be so sweet and, and killer. So I can't necessarily fix that because I already doomed myself with that. But I definitely have learned in the future, maybe lean heavier into the Boshade realm yeah uh yeah i agree I, I would not i mean i said add you know carbonate maybe add a little bit more acid to it um you know i, I always say that you know, especially if you still have in the fermenter if you still aren't happy with it throw a fruit that you think might melt with it too you know yeah. it doesn't have to just because you have a traditional that you know if you want to improve it sometimes doing something like that can can step it up some so hmm. um it's a good idea I'll definitely brainstorm a little bit, but as far as this video is concerned, you know, I've, I've toted this as a coffee blossom boche, and it is to some extent. It's just not leaning in super heavily to the boche side. So as people are, are wanting to make a boche, uh, maybe learn from me and, and do more percentage of boche honey to help yourself out if you really want to lean into that. I do think it's good. I like this mead, but I am... I am feeling like I can't really call it a true boche, so uh, I'll I'll probably be submitting it into things for competitions as a trad. I've already entered it into one, I think, in the experimental category <laughs> as a boche. So we'll see if if they um, 
what they say about it. They might come back and be like, what are you talking about? This isn't experimental, you know, who knows? Well, yeah, I mean, technically this, that style should be there. And actually one of the things we talk about competitions, it kind of, and again, I think even our last video, I talked about how, where does that go? Because they don't call it out anywhere in the guidelines. Mm. Typically it should be an experimental, whether you add fruit or anything else, it should go an experimental. Depending on the competition, they may penalize you if you don't mm. put that into that experimental category yeah. too. Hmm. All right, before this video ends, I wanna talk about what I did to this mead, or at least give you a disclaimer that I did some things to this mead to make it better. The mead itself was not super interesting. As Bill and I were talking about, it it was okay, but it's not anything to run and write home about, as they say. So I adapted this mead with another one. So this is the Coffee Blossom Boche. I decided to blend the Coffee Blossom Boche with a raspberry honey, or sorry, raspberry mead specifically, and make something interesting. I threw in some cacao nibs and some ancho chili and more raspberries. After blending these meads, made myself a pretty good brew. And I have a whole video on that one specifically, the blend of the two, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but I am gonna tell you, the boche itself, it was fine, but it needed some help. So I will try and redirect you to that video if it's uploaded, we'll see, it'll be in the description. But yeah, had to just kind of quick cut in real fast. Well, we'll see how it does. I mean, there's there are gonna be some results at some point, so I'm sure I could throw them up on screen and it might've totally bombed. I might have some judge who was like, this isn't a boche, you know, get it out of here and gave me like a three. So who knows? But regardless, thank you for, for helping to taste this one. We actually have another one we're gonna taste and you, you kind of, um, uh, alluded to something that I did, you know, throwing in a fruit uh, for this next one. So we get to to try that one now. So thank you, Bill. If you'd like to um, see Bill's name everywhere, go check out the AMMA circuit right now or the Master Homebrew Program. He is a master mead maker, cider maker. I haven't had any beer from you, so I don't know, but I've had your <laughs> cider and mead, so I can 100% uh, can confirm that you are a fantastic cider and mead maker. And uh, he's, he's a wonderful guy who's willing to help. He's helped me greatly. And I have no doubt that if you reached out to him and said, hey, what do I do? He would he'd be willing to help. So thank you for your time. Well, thank you. All right, here we go. Let's go to the next one. All right. <laughs>